This is Ashley Judd. Um, she's an actress, uh, is an actress. I thought she was extremely attractive in Backdraft. I believe that was the first movie I saw her in. Um, she was the one that was saying all those things about Trump on the, uh, you know, making all those statements about Trump, yelling about him, using foul language and whatnot. But you can hate Trump all you want. This is not about that. I know many um, many of my viewers are not the biggest Trump fans. Some don't like him at all. Um, and that cuts across everything. Um, <clears throat> one of my best friends and closest uh, people <clears throat> in my uh, parish who I um, spend basically... No, probably about more than 24 hours with each week um, over a period of days. And I'm um, always over at his house. He's an uh, ardent Biden supporter um, and doesn't like Trump at all. But uh, just for context, she's been an actress since the 90s and um, early 90s. So a millionaire since the 90s and probably is only usually talks to other millionaires and famous people. People of extreme wealth, privilege, and opportunity. Now, let's go on. I am Ashley Judd, and I'm going to do a little live post uh, from the airport. I'm traveling today, and this is the kind of thing to me that happens, which I categorize as everyday sexism, and it's so easy to let it go, not to... What is this everyday sexism that she's talking about? Um, well, we should, uh, let's find out. This is the everyday sexism that she's in, she encounters. Speak up, particularly when it's so easy for someone to push back and say, oh, I was just being polite or something like that. So I was coming through security and a guy said. It's so easy to push back and say, oh, I was just being polite. So. This is everyday sexism. This is sexism, not just people being polite, um, not just a fluke of, you know, a, you know, somebody's personality, but this is, you know, everyday sexism. So she was going through an airport. Hey, sweetheart. And I said, I'm not your sweetheart. I am your client. So I was already setting the boundary. Okay, Karen. And then when I was setting my things out, he said, hey, nice dress. I didn't hear him saying anything about the attire of any of the other folks. Okay, now I'm from Illinois, um, Chicago to be more exact, and then Chicagoland area. Um, currently, but I have relatives that live in the South um, from the older generation, probably, you know, um, in between baby boomers and my age, um, that say, hey, darling, to any woman, um, hold doors open for any woman. Um, you know, uh, it's kind of an endearing thing. Uh, they view women as valuable and gentle and sweet and naturally good. And no matter how nasty a woman is, they will treat them with respect. It's the kind of old-fashioned way of doing things. That is might be considered sexism, but absolutely in their favor. Now, um, I've worked customer service a lot um, and have had to work with the public a lot in many jobs. And if, you know, you're thrown off by somebody, sometimes you or somebody's being real bitchy to you, a lot of times, male or female, you will try to be nicer to them. So he compliments her on her dress, not her ass, not her tits, her dress, her clothing. Why do you do that and not anybody else that you could hear of? Well, he might have complimented other people and she just wasn't around or too self-absorbed. Or it could be that it's a natural um, rea it's a reaction, a nervous reaction to her being a bitch to him. The entire line, and I am in one of the most traveled airports in the world. I'm surrounded by lots and lots of other people in lots of different kinds of dress. I set my stuff on the doohickey, you know, the doohickey that rolls, and I was speaking with one of his colleagues. She was saying, do you have on high heel shoes, whatever, and guess what happened next? He touched me. Where? I 
didn't see him touch anybody else. Um, when moving through people in a crowded airport, uh, you wind up touching many people. Um, when working around uh, girls or women, maybe this is seen as bad, um, I'll move them out of their way by touching their waist and moving them. With a guy, their shoulder. Um, why do you naturally move a girl out of the way by her hips? That's where the center of her gravity is, and you're not being violent. You're not pushing her over. Why do that with a guy? Because a guy, his, his shoulders are wider than his hips, um, and guys are more rough and tumble. But uh, I don't even think she he touched her by her hips, because um, she would mention that. Uh, and I've never been called, I've never been accused of, you know, sexually molesting any girl or anything like that. But then again, I usually work around Hispanic women, who know that men and women are two different genders and are sexually dimorphic and also are culturally different, which Anglophone women tend not to know, or at least the elitist ones like this. So where did he touch her? Her arm? If he's a TSA agent, they can patch you down all they want. You're, you're their client? Um... That's like saying the police are the inmates' clients. Or the police arresting you are your clients. Well, they're paid by your taxes, yeah, but... I mean, I hated this when I was a, in, a phlebotomist, a lab tech, and I know doctors and nurses hate this. You work for me. Bullshit, I work for the hospital, motherfucker. Or I did. And these people at the airport, they either work for the government, the TSA, or they work directly for the airport or an airline. Um, you know, just like, uh, people being bitchy in a restaurant, that waitress works for the restaurant, not you. You may be a patron, but, you know, you're not their boss. And I turned around and I said, that was unnecessary. By the time... He probably didn't know what he did. My skin is burning, my feet are burning, it's so to continue to set these boundaries when someone continues to push. Your skin is burning and your feet are burning. What, did you have sunburn or is that related to you being so petty and pissed off of an interaction with someone who might be normal or might be socially awkward? I, I hope she doesn't run into autistic people who sometimes don't know boundaries um, because... or. Even Brazilians that have a different sense of boundaries, that'll walk right up to your face and talk to you really close. Has she ever dealt with other cultures? I've had to deal with Vietnamese people who couldn't speak English in factories, Brazilians, people from all over Latin America, people from China. Um, and let me tell you, things that they think are normal, we think are outrageous. Like Chinese people straight from China, I don't know if it's just a certain part of China, will hack up and cough up and just spit right on the ground, the worst type of phlegm, and will talk extremely loud. Now, they're not a violent people, um, and they're not, uh, you know, but also they will try to take, if something is free, they think they can grab as many as possible. Like, it's very weird until they're acclimated to American society. Brazilians, if they're only around other Brazilians or if they're new here, they, the Americans have a great, uh, great amount of what they consider personal space. It's like an arm's length or more. Brazil, probably because of the topography and because it's a Latin culture, uh, personal space ends basically about two inches away from you. Uh, India, it, <laughs> wow, I bet she's never ridden a public bus in India. And then for, then for good measure, he just said one more time, have a good day, sweetheart. So I have plenty of time. I'm really early for my flight. And I popped my breath and I said my prayers. And, you know, my, my intention is to put principle. Prayers. He was trying to be nice to you and he probably, again, didn't know what problem you had with him and was 
He didn't say, you know, have a day, bitch. Called you sweetheart. That's a nice thing. Again, who knows? The guy might have been from the South, from an older generation. Um, and he didn't call you darling again. Uh, he was totally nice to you, from what I hear. Your prayers, again, this new age shit, what do you pray to? You pray, can I be more compassionate to other people? God, help me to be more compassionate to other people. Help me understand. Help me to be more humble. But apparently, this new type of, you know, I'm spiritual but not religious shit is you focused, me time, all this bullshit that's come around because of spiritual but not religious. Above personalities, I'm not here to be controversial, I'm not here to um, be combative. But I asked for a manager and I introduced myself and I shook his hand and I asked for his name and I explained the situation. How is that and not I combative? How's that? That's my first Facebook Live post in real life. I've got my mouthpiece in, so if I look and sound funny, that's why. Because I know that, you know, then these things become all about other types of femaleness, appearance, and whatever. Anyway, thanks for listening. I can see your hearts and your thumbs up. Love you. Peace out. Oh, uh, how, is, how is that not being combative or bitchy or, I mean, you asked to see the manager and you complained about the guy. You didn't, you know, you know, even if you, even if you, let's say, let's say uh, something like that happened and uh, you actually were a person that, you know, did introspection. You might, you know, have the presence of mind to write then and there, instead of being combative, go talk to the man compassionately and say, look, I'm not comfortable with being touched. Uh, I don't like people, can you please not use gendered language at me or whatever. Now, that might seem very SJW-y, but it's not bitchy, it's just a totally new weird culture that I personally don't agree with, but I can at least respect it, respect people who act like that, who aren't bitches, and not, uh, not going to the manager and trying to give the guy a hard time. He's working, he actually has to work a job to support himself and possibly his family, um, who you don't know their situation. Um, what about those pray for those who wrong you? Um, turn the other cheek. Oh, she obviously doesn't follow those, you know, because, you know, it's easier for a rich man to get into heaven than a camel to go through an eye of a needle. Um, or it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than, or, than for a rich man to get into heaven. Or if you use the Aramaic, it's easier for a large rope to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven. And uh, we're seeing the results of that here. Um, why not, Ashley Judd, why not return and ask the man to sit down and have a cup of coffee with you? And since you're such a damn millionaire and a famous actress, maybe he has um, problems that he's going through. Maybe he's got a son that's in the hospital. Maybe you can help pay the bills. Maybe you can teach him if you think he's doing something wrong, maybe you can teach him how to act right. You have the time. You're a millionaire and you're famous. You absolutely have the time to help this man's life. And if you think this is a problem, you can stop at least that small bit from happening. We all can't change, not one person can't change the entire world. But we can affect the world very importantly by affecting people positively, the ones that we deal with in our small, small realm that we're in. But no, you decided to act as if you're queen bitch superhero, get on um, Facebook, this is on YouTube right now, but get on Facebook, brag about what you did as if you're Captain Marvel, put down this man, also mention that you prayed. I wonder what you asked for in prayer or what you meditated upon. It's just shocking all around. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Peace to you.